Good morning, church. It's so awesome to be together. Thanks so much for coming. But you know what? If you're like me, you don't have to be talked into coming because this is our happy hour. This is a place where we're made whole. This is God's gift to us. This isn't something we have to do. It's something we get to do because wherever two or more are gathered in his name, Jesus is present. And I just got to ask you, where else would you rather be than where Jesus is? And so we're celebrating the fact that we're the church. We're celebrating the fact that God has called us together to share his presence with us. And St. Paul, in his first letter to the church at Corinth, is talking about what a marvelous, wonderful thing the church is. And he compares it uh, with a brilliant analogy to the human body. And I want to share it with you. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31. And I invite you to hear the word of God. The body is a unit Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact... God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You know, like most children, when my sons Matthew and Sean were little boys, they were heavily into Legos. And if you think about it, Legos really are ingenious. I I have to hand it to whoever invented them. They are an amazing toy. They, They really are. Because there's simply no end to what can be done with them, right? You don't need to buy new ones to do something new. You can use the same ones you already have to do something brand new. And what my boys could create from the same pile of little plastic bricks was limited only by their imagination. And they built everything from churches. They really did. I mean, how many little boys build churches? But mine did. So they built everything from churches to alligators to aliens to pod racers, all with the same pile of little plastic bricks. They really are versatile and ingenious little toy. 
And I also think that Legos have a lot to teach you and me about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I think Legos can teach you and me a lot about what it means to be a Christian, about what it means to be a part of the body of Christ, about what it means to be the church. And let God build us up brick by brick into some incredible and wonderful thing. When St. Paul was writing to the church in Corinth, he used this brilliant imagery to help the followers of Jesus understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. He wrote it to help you and me understand what it means to be a Christian. And he compared being a Christian to being an organ in the human body. In other words, he compared us to, to being one indispensable part of an organ which is comprised of many, 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 many other indispensable parts, and each part must do its part to the full in order for the body to function correctly, in order for the whole to have health and vitality. And of course, Paul's teaching to the church at Corinth wasn't just for the church at Corinth. It's for all churches everywhere, and it's just as relevant for Wesley United Methodist Church in 2018 as it was to the church at Corinth in, in 45 A.D. You see, just as our bodies, our human bodies, are comprised of many, 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 many different organs, all working for the good of the whole, so it is with the body of Christ. We all of us are many, 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 many different parts, but we all must work for the good of not us, but for the good of the whole. It's a lot like Legos. Think of it this way. What can you do with one Lego, right? I mean, seriously, right? Uh, it's Christmas morning, and, uh, you know, your children get up, and, and they rush to the Christmas tree, and underneath you've got this, a Lego. And you go, Merry Christmas, have fun, let your creation run wild. What are they going to do with one Lego? I mean, seriously. Because, friends, you can't do anything with one Lego, right? There's not much at all that you can do with one Lego. We need lots of Legos coming together to be able to do anything. And just like these little bricks, friends, when you and I are on our own, I'm afraid to tell you this, but it's the truth. When you and I are on our own, there's not much God can do with you. And I know there's this myth running rampant in our world today. And you've heard it, right? Oh, I can be a Christian without being a member of a church. No, you can't. Not according to God, you can't. There is no such thing anywhere in the Bible that talks about a Christian who's a solitary thing. Christians are the community of Jesus Christ. You can't be a community all by yourself, right? You can't be a part of the body in abstention. That doesn't make sense. You can't be a part of the body of Christ unless you're a part of the body of Christ. And so when we're on our own, there's not much that God can do with us. But friends, when we come together, oh my goodness, the possibilities are endless with what God can accomplish through us when we come together. But you know what? You know what? Even coming together is not enough. Even coming together isn't enough, right? Like, look at this, all right? Here we have this nice bag of Legos. So let's get them all together here. All right. So I got them all together. They all came together. Now what do we have? We got a Baptist over here. We got to bring them over. <laughs> what do we have? We got a pile of Legos. We got a mess. We got something that I'm going to trip on is what we have. We got a pile of Legos. We don't have anything. So you see, just coming together, now that's important because until they come together, nothing can be done. So they've got to come together. But my point is, 
It's not good enough to just come together. We got to do something else too. And what we need to do is have a master plan, right? Someone has to come along who has a master plan of what they want to do with this pile of Legos in order for any beautiful and awesome thing to be built. This pile of Legos will simply remain a pile of bricks until someone comes along with a master plan. And when someone sits down with a building plan, well now we're cooking with gas because now this pile of bricks can be built into anything that the builder wants. Let me show you what I mean. To prepare for this message, last week I challenged Pastor Megan and I challenged Andy, our, our director of children's ministry, to a Lego building contest. And I told them I would let you all decide the winner. Okay? What I said was we're all going to use our creativity and do awesome things. And we're going to let the good people of Wesley judge who's the most creative, who did the, the greatest thing. Okay? See, when you have this pile of Legos and have a master plan, it can become anything. Like an airplane. Here's the one I did. Aren't you proud of me? Isn't this awesome? All right? Who... It's awesome, right? Okay, okay. All right, thanks. I'm pretty proud of it. Or the same pile of Legos <laughs> can be used to build a Millennium Falcon, right? She's trying to make me look bad is what she's doing, okay? Or this very same pile of bricks can be used to make Mount Rushmore, and that's what Andy did right? He's, he's good, okay? <laughs> but my point is this. The same thing is true for the community of Christ. There's not much that God can accomplish with just one Lego. When you're not a part of the community, there's not much that God can do with you. We need lots of Legos coming together for God to be able to do what God wants. And just like these little bricks, once we come together, once we come together, friends, then we need to submit to the plan of the master builder. We need to submit to the plan of the one who has this awesome and wonderful plan in store for us. And God, of course, is that ultimate master planner, right? God, of course, is the ultimate creator. God is the one who has plans for us. And his word says he has plans for us, plans that are good, plans where we will prosper. God has this wonderful, glorious plan for us, friends. But it's only when we come together and submit to his will that it can be accomplished. And sometimes that's a problem. Because see, what it means is when we come together, then we have to be willing to do what God wants us to do. Not be willing to do whatever's convenient for us or whatever I like to do or whatever will fit into my schedule. Okay? We need to come together and allow God's will be done, not my will be done. Listen again what the Bible says. But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Notice it doesn't say anything about God asked you what you would like to do and what's convenient and what will work into your schedule and then he plugs you in. No, it says God has arranged the parts in the Bible, or parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? Okay? If you're all by yourself, one part, where would the body be? It's not there. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. See, God has a plan for us. He has arranged the parts in the body. He has put the individual Legos exactly where he wanted them to be to accomplish this master beautiful plan that he has. And what that means is that God has given you unique gifts that I don't have. God has given you awesome abilities that I don't have. And what that means is I need you to do your part because I can't do it. And you need me to do my part because you can't do my part. And we all need each other to do our parts because every part must do its part to be able to bring health and vitality to the whole. 
But here's where the analogy breaks down. See, a child can arrange these Legos however he or she wants, right? And the Legos have no say. The Legos can't choose to not cooperate. They're an inanimate object, and they will go wherever the master planner wants them to go. But the problem is that's not true with you and I. God gave us this beautiful, glorious gift called free will. And this beautiful, glorious gift can also be a terrible curse at the same time. See, God gave you and I free will for one reason. And it's very clear, it's very practical, right? By nature, love has to be a choice, right? If you don't have a choice, you can't love. You just can't. I cannot force you to love me. I cannot make you love me. You have to choose to love me. And if you don't have a choice, if you don't have the ability to choose, you don't have the ability to love. It's that simple. Well, God wanted more than anything else to create beings who will love him. And so when God created us, God made us have this thing called free will so that we would have the freedom to choose to love him. That's what he wanted. But you know what I know. If you have the freedom to choose to love God, then that necessarily means you have the freedom to not love God, right? If I have the freedom of choice, that means I can say, no, I don't want to do that, God. No, I don't want to do what you want me to do. No, my will be done, O oh Lord, not thy will be done. Because we have free will, we can try to do our own thing and build our own thing, follow our own will instead of the will of God. But when we choose our will over the will of God, then what we build will fall. Not might, it will. Jesus promised us that. Jesus said, it, black and white, it will fall. Listen to Jesus' words in Matthew's Gospel. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it. What's he saying? Anyone who knows what I want and says, okay, right? Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, obeys what I want, is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, right? Anyone who uses their free will to say, yes, Lord, I know what you want, but Jesus says they are foolish. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and floods come and the wind beats against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. See, friends, sometimes we think we know what's best. But in order to withstand the winds and the storms of this world, which will come our way, we have to come to grips with a fact. And the fact is this. God is smarter than we are. God is better than we are. God knows more than we do. And so what we need to admit is that God is God and we are not and so we have to choose, use our free will to submit our wills to God's will and allow God to use us how God wants to use us to build this mighty, holy temple that he's wanting us to be. Now, one of the very best projects that ever happened to my son's building, or one of the best things that ever happened to my son's building projects was this simple little board. It's a, it's a Lego board, okay? And, and, and let me show you what a difference it made. Okay, here's the structure, and obviously I just built this so that you can see it, all right? But here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing, all right? It's, it's sound, right? I built it good. I, I did a good job building it. It's, 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 it's all there. It's, it's, it's wonderful, but here's the problem. Look what happens when winds, 
what's wrong? It was solid. I built it well. No, the problem is simple. It wasn't built on a solid foundation. It wasn't built on anything other than what I chose to put it on. And if it's going to be solid, then it needs to be built on a solid foundation. And that makes all the difference in the world. Let me show you if I can get this together at this point. Okay, now we have that same structure, right? Again, it's solid look, okay? And when it's now built on a solid foundation, look what happens. Look what happens. If a preacher can't blow it over, it's not going over, okay? <laughs> we have hot air more than anyone else except maybe a bishop. Okay. <laughs> but look. Do you see the difference? Look at this. Winds and waves and storms come. It ain't going anywhere. Same structure. What's the difference? It's built on a solid foundation. And friends, Jesus is our foundation. Jesus is our cornerstone. Jesus is our bedrock. Jesus is the one who brings us together, builds us together to do amazing and incredible things. The Bible says this, you are coming to Christ who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones. You are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. And because Jesus is our foundation, he is the one that has the master plan for our lives. He is the one who has the master plan for our church. He is the one who has the master plan for our world. Jesus is the one who is taking all of these separate parts and bringing them together and building us into this holy temple, which is the body of Christ on earth. And Jesus is the one and the only one who can take all these different blocks and turn them into one holy structure. He's the only one who can take all these different parts and turn them into one glorious holy temple. He is the one who uni unifies us. He is our rock. He is our foundation. He is our master planner. The Bible tells us in him, which is Jesus, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. Isn't that awesome? God is calling us together, and God has chosen you to have an essential part in this awesome and beautiful and wonderful thing that He's doing in our world. If that doesn't make you feel important, you're not thinking clearly, because God has chosen you to be a part of this marvelous thing that he's doing. Now on our own, there's not much that God can do with us. But together, man, God can do all things. So for your sake, for the church's sake, for the world's sake, let's come together. Let's allow ourselves to be used as God sees fit. Let us submit our wills to the will of God that, can, that God can take us and put us where he wants us to serve and build us up brick by brick into his holy temple. God has wondrous plans for us and we can do it, friends, but we can only do it together. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.